Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at some useful edge sliding tools, but also some ways to deal with some issues with things you can't do in edge slide. So let's go and have a look at this. So a while ago I was posting a short video and it got a lot of comments and a few questions, so I just wanted to cover the things that were asked. So the first issue that came from that video is that I pointed out that if you press Ctrl and R you get this edge loop, click and you can move it backwards and forwards, but it changes the shape of the edge loop. And if you want to keep it to one side, if you just press E, it evens it up to that side. Or you can press F to flip it to the other side, which is a really useful tool. But if you look in the top left hand corner, you'll notice that this is being done from the center is zero. And then you've got minus one and positive one. It's done as a proportion. And I was asked, how can you sort this out so you can do an exact measurement from one side? OK, so let's escape that and undo it. and We'll talk through that. So the first thing, if you want to sort that out, Make sure this auto merge vertices is off, which means that you don't merge any vertices that are overlapping. You can just press Ctrl and R, click, drag it to the side that you want, click, and then you can press G and then Y to move it across. And now you're moving it across in a certain amount of millimeters or whatever your blender units are in the top left hand corner. Or you can just type it in. So, for example, if I want it to be, let's say, minus one, that is now one blender unit from the edge just here. So a nice useful trick, but it has a problem with it. When I've moved it over here, I come back here and I'm pressing G and then Y. I have to press the Y to keep it on the Y axis. And what if this model, let's say for example, is somewhere there and there is now no Y axis. Well, firstly, there is a Y axis if we come in and do this again. So let's go to edge, control and R, click, bring it over. While we press G and Y, and that works off the global Y axis, so the y-axis from here, what we can do is set it to work off the local y-axis. So if you press G, Y, and then Y again, it now becomes the y-axis of this object. And this is really important. If I press the end panel to bring this out, you can see that we've got a set rotation here. And that's how Blender is working out what the local y-axis is so that when we go into edge mode, we can G, Y, and Y and move it along this local y-axis. But we then get a further problem, so let's just undo that one more time. While we've got this local rotation, if we press Ctrl and A, sometimes we will want to apply our scale. You'll notice if we come over here, we can see my scale is a bit messed up. Effectively, it's not 1, and if I just S and Y, Y, we can make that even more of a mess. And that can cause problems when doing things like bevels. So if I come to edge mode and select, say, there and there and Ctrl and B, we'll see that they're not really beveling at 45 degrees, and the reason for that is that these are not scaled to one. So we generally want to control an A and apply the scale. And you might do something quickly, like apply the rotation and scale, and now you've lost that rotation, which means that you can no longer come to edge mode, control an R, come to the side, and then G and then Y, and then if I press Y again, it no longer works. I can't do it again. So how are we gonna solve this problem? Now, there's actually several ways of doing this. It depends what you want to do. But it's all about fiddling around with how your transform orientations work. So if we come and have a look up here, you've got several transform orientations that you can use. For example, when we press Y twice, it automatically becomes the local orientation, which means that we're just using it for this object. We don't have to come in here and select it because that takes more time. And they've thought about that in Blender. But we have other ones as well. For example, we have the view orientation. And what that means is that if I come into an edge, so let's say that edge here, and then I change my view to be perfectly to this edge, so I'm going to press Shift and 7, we're now looking at this edge's orientation. So if I press Ctrl and R again, drag it all the way, and then I can press G, and then work out what this orientation is, now I'm assuming it will be Y, we can move that along our set amount again. Now if you want this to be more visually obvious, if you come up here, you can put on your object gizmo, let's set it on for moving, and you can set what that's going to be for. So for example, it's showing me that Y is this direction. So again, edge, control R, drag it down, then G and Y, and then move that, because we're working on our view orientation. Now, when you do go into this shift and seven, it does create a bit of a weird way of panning around. So if you just click one, it'll come back to a normal sort of viewpoint. Now, the other thing that we can do, if we don't want to be moving around by the view orientation, which can be a little bit tricky, is we can actually set up a custom orientation. So what I'm gonna do is come into this edge, select the edge, 
come down here and then press plus. We've now got our edge orientation. So now our movement is going to be set to that orientation. And so I can see it easily. Now when I come to my object gizmos, you'll see we've now got this edge option. And we can see what that's done there. So we now know what our different orientations are. We've got green for Y, blue for Z, and red for X. So once again, while this is set to edge, control and R, click, drag it to the side, G, and then now Y, and we'll move it along the Y axis or the custom Y axis along this edge. And again, we can measure that out or type in, let's say, minus two. And then we've got our fixed thickness here of two millimeters for all of these edges. The other reason this could be helpful if we make a cube and we just change one of the sides to be smaller by scaling it is it allows us some more control again when manipulating different sizes. For example, let's just turn this gizmo off for a second. If I come into here and I go into edge mode and I select an edge, what's really great is that we can G, G, and then slide along this and our edge, because we're in edge mode, not vertex mode, is going to change in size following this shape which means that we can move it backwards and forwards. But again, this is being done as a proportion. Also, if we press C to clamp it, we can start making this go further as well. Again, being done as a proportion. So there are limits to this. Whereas if we select our edge and then make another custom edge, you'll notice they call this now 001. We can go into vertex mode, select the vertex G and Y. Let's actually put the gizmo back on, but we need to change it now. Notice we've got edge and edge 01, so we can G and Y, and it's gonna follow along, and we can change that to let's say minus two. But we are gonna to have to do this for each edge, because if I come here, it's going to stick with that original edge. So I do have to come to edge, plus to custom, and then go into vertex, and then G and Y. I appreciate the gizmos looking wrong. Let's go and flip that. So we can't get it to automatically go to that edge, which would be really nice if the gizmo just changed to the last set one, but oh well. And then we can G and Y and move that along. So let's say two, and we'll have those having moved an equal distance. We could do that for the other side as well. So this is useful for other things as well. And especially when you've applied that rotation, it gives you a lot of options of what to do to manipulate your objects after you've applied that rotation, if you have for some reason. A little bit more on focusing on some skills there, but hopefully that was useful and it answers a few questions that I've been getting from people on the Patreon. As always, if it was useful, please do give this a like and subscribe for more great Blender content. Have a great day, guys.